Hello, I'm Glenn Darling from the IBM Edge Application Manager team, and I'd like to tell you how the components within IBM Edge Application Manager securely communicate with each other to reduce the vectors of attack and minimize the possibility of the IEAM system becoming compromised. So what is IEAM? IBM's commercial distribution of the Linux Foundation's Edge project called Open Horizon. It's our single pane of glass for containerized software management, and it works on both Kubernetes clusters and standalone Linux computers. So let's begin by taking a look at the main components of IEAM. Then I can walk you through how they securely and robustly manage your containerized workloads. So uh, IBM Edge Application Manager Edge nodes can either be Kubernetes clusters or uh, small computers or large computers. And I've got a bunch of pictures of small computers over here, x86-64, ARM32 v6, ARM32 v7, ARM64 v8. And uh, the community has also produced power versions and RISC-V versions of uh, Open Horizon, the underlying software. So the edge nodes are the places where your containerized workloads will actually run. And each edge node can be either a standalone Linux host uh, that requires Docker or something similar, uh, or an entire Kubernetes cluster. And they're all typically deployed behind a firewall. And a single IEAM instance can manage your containerized workloads on any combination of those edge nodes and uh, currently up to 40,000 of them on a single management hub. And of course you can have multiple management hubs if you scale beyond that. So each edge node, uh, whether it's a computer or cluster, it runs the IEAM agent software. So uh, to IBM Edge Application Manager, it's really just an agent. And each agent is very small. It's about 30 megabytes of uh, RAM that it requires at runtime. And it's completely autonomous. It's driven by the software deployment policies or pattern that you've set for it. So IEAM is mostly decentralized with the agents running on each of your nodes doing most of the work. But there's also a centralized management hub and it's running in a, a Kubernetes cluster, uh, OpenShift Kubernetes cluster as an operator. So it's in some kind of uh, data center somewhere, uh, but it can be in your factory or it can be uh, in your corporate data center and it can even be air gapped from the internet. It just needs to be able to uh, be contacted by your agents. But there are several components within the Management Hub that I'd like to talk about. So these components are within the Management Hub and the main, they're the main ones, the Model Management Service, the Switchboard, the Exchange, and then a group of agreement robots that we call AgBots. There are other components as well, like we have uh, HashiCorp Vault integration, uh, which is our secret manager and um, there's code for secure device onboarding as well, but these are the primary components and the ones that I'll talk about with our communications. So I showed the AgBots in the same color boxes as the agent, and I did that just because they actually share the identical code. And so they can be deployed behind firewalls if desired as well, uh, because uh, nothing ever reaches out to communicate with an AgBot and nothing ever reaches out to communicate with an agent. Instead, the agents and the AgBots communicate to the management hub. So let's take a look at the containerized, how the containerized software gets published in IEM to make it available for your edge nodes to use. So I've drawn a little developer down at the bottom here who's writing some code. And uh, that code has to be containerized. So it has to be built into a Docker container. And then uh, it has to be pushed to a Docker compliant registry. And that could be either a public registry or it could be a private registry with credentials, um, wherever you deem it appropriate to publish your containers. And 
uh, then the next thing you need to do is cryptographically code sign the software. So uh, once you've done that, then you can publish the metadata, including that signature and any deployment information to the exchange component in the management hub. So that tells the exchange that this container in this registry, optionally using these credentials uh, with this cryptographic signature, um, has these deployment characteristics. It's able to bind to these ports, it's able to mount these volumes, uh, etc. And uh, then you publish all that to the exchange to make it available so you can uh, configure policies and patterns that use it. Oh, and I should note that if you are publishing something that will ultimately be run in a Kubernetes cluster, then you also need to create what's called an operator for your container, and that would be part of what you publish to that exchange. So let's take a look at how the Management Hub components communicate with the agents on the edge node. Uh, even though they're behind firewalls and our agents open no listening ports, unlike some of our competitor software where, where the central hub has to communicate with their agent software on the nodes or to SSH into the nodes, we don't do it that way. We do it the opposite way. We turn the communications upside down and the agents always reach out. So the agents and agbots both begin by creating switchboard mailboxes using their public keys as their addresses. And then after that, they will forever poll for messages in their mailboxes at whatever rate you configure. So you, if you want extremely fast response, you can configure the polling to be very fast. Um, but if you have very large numbers of nodes, then that creates quite a bit of overhead. So you typically with large number of nodes, you uh, dial that back a little bit. Um, so this allows the agents to be firewall because nothing ever directly contacts them. So the agbots additionally monitor the model management system and the exchange to get relevant information uh, about what, what software has been published and what policies and patterns are published and so on. So let's take a look at a typical exchange of communications when you register an edge node using a software deployment pattern. So the agents and agbots are polling, like I was mentioning before. Then when an agent is registered for a software deployment pattern, an agbot responsible for that pattern will notice this. That agbot will then prepare an agreement proposal and encrypt it for that particular agent and then mail it through the switchboard to the mailbox for that agent's public key. So it encrypts it in a way that the switchboard will be un incapable of reading it and any other agent would be incapable of reading it and only the agent whose public key is there can decrypt that message. And uh, so that agent will, who is also polling the mailbox will notice that and it will retrieve the proposal, decrypt it and read the proposal and then it will evaluate the proposal to see if it matches the software deployment pattern that uh, the agent was configured with. And if so, it will accept the agreement and it will encrypt a reply for the agbot and mail it back to the agbot. And the agbot will notice this, download it, and at that point, the agreement to collaborate on software update has been finalized. And we use a similar mechanism when the more powerful policy mechanism is used. So for policy, the AGBOT is polling uh, the exchange like before. And uh, this time it's looking not just for edge node registrations, but it's also looking for policies. And then when the agent registers with a particular policy, the AGBOT uh, will evaluate whether any deployment and service policies that exist in the exchange warrant an agreement proposal with the agent, and then it will proceed the same way as it did with patterns. Now, let's finally look at how the model management service enables similarly secure deployments of your large data files, like your machine learning model files, without the overhead 
of a Linux container update and without restarting your edge node software. So there's zero downtime. Your uh, inferencing software can continue to run on your edge node and only the neural network model will be updated and then it can cut over between inferences to the new version of your model with no downtime. So the developer creates their large file like a machine learning model file and then it publishes it to the IEAM exchange using a, a pattern or policy um, to the model management service, not the exchange. And the Agbot that's been polling the MMS and that has looked for edge node registrations, it will notice whether the uh, policy or pattern of a particular agent would make it interested in this MMS publication of this file. And if so, then it will reach out to the agent through their switchboard mailboxes, just like before. And then the corresponding agent will receive and verify the information. And then it will directly contact the MMS to pull the file and make it available locally for your services to consume. So let's review some of the key points. Every edge node runs a tiny but completely autonomous agent that's driven by either your software deployment patterns or policies. Agents never open any ports. They're typically firewalled and they always reach outward only. Agents and Agbots collaborate to manage the node software aided by the exchange and the switchboard and the model management service. And the agents and Agbots communicate privately encrypted messages through a switchboard. So only those two participants can ever read or write those messages. The other components of the management hub, even the exchange, the switchboard, and so on, is incapable of eavesdropping or inserting communications in those uh, uh, messages. We also use perfect forward secrecy on the messaging streams. So there's a new key generated for each additional message. The agents then make their own decisions. They're autonomous and they evaluate all the agreements by themselves. The agbots just draw their attention to an agreement, but the agents make the decisions. So the agents also independently verify cryptographic code signatures on your containers. Uh, they also verify the signatures of your container deployment information and your MMS data files. So the system was designed to be as decentralized as possible to enable massive scale, tens of thousands per hub, and it was designed to minimize the possibility of any kind of systemic compromise. So the central hub has no authority over the agents. The agents make their own decisions. So even if a node is completely hacked, there's no information there on the node that can harm any other nodes. And of course, there's much more to learn about IBM Edge Application Manager. There's the zero touch secure device onboarding, just plug it in and walk away and it'll configure itself, download its own software and so on. There's our uh, integration with Vault, the secrets manager. We have uh, networking features for communication between containers, uh, but we'll save that for another video. So if you're ready to learn more, the Linux Foundation's YouTube channel has an Open Horizon playlist. You can use that QR code or that URL to, to get there. There's a dozen or so videos about the underlying Open Horizon software. And the IBM Edge Application Manager's official documentation pages are here. You can hit that QR code. And if you are ready to learn more about the product itself, this is the IBM Edge Application Manager official product page. And with that, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you will uh, find IBM Edge Application Manager suitable for your application.